have a dilemma. Do audiobooks count as reading? After Farah posted a vlog on audiobooks in her October Favorites video, I decided to give audiobooks another shot. After all, my New York Public Library has a great selection of audiobooks, and for a long time I wanted to take advantage of that. I feel like I'm cheating if I listen to audiobooks. It's not exactly the same experience, and I'm not an auditory learner. In the past, I had trouble concentrating on audiobooks. I just have a tendency to block out the sounds, and five minutes later, I'll realize I have no idea what's going on. But I really wanted to give audiobooks a decent chance, because I have been getting some from Macmillan for review, and I feel bad not being able to review some of these titles. So right now, I'm almost done with my first audiobook. It was probably eight or nine hours long. It was Virals by Kathy Rikes. Rikes? I'm not really sure how to say her last name. The young adult spin-off series. I know that she's somehow connected to that TV show Bones. I'm guessing that she wrote that series too for adults. Um, I don't know much about it, but I've heard great things about virals. And since I haven't read it yet, I want to try an audio, and it is fantastic. Unlike other audiobooks that I've tried, there's actually sound effects in this one. It brings a lot for the book because I really feel the tension when I'm reading. I've never usually gotten that from audiobooks. It might just be that I haven't listened to a good audiobook up until now. But back to the cheating. Am I supposed to count this towards my Goodreads challenge? I know I'm supposed to read 136 books this year, but if I'm listening to them as audio, is it the same thing as reading? Everything's inside my head. It's just I'm not reading the words. It's being spoken to me. I don't know. What do you guys think? Right now, Vitals is on my currently reading list on Goodreads. I'm starting to lean towards counting it as reading a book. I'm still torn. I finally found activities that I can do while listening to audiobooks. It took me a long time, and I realized very early on if an activity involves reading in some way, I will just block out the audio. Browsing the internet for the most part, reading blogs and Google Reader, Homework, the only activities left are chores. I love to listen to audiobooks when cooking, cleaning, washing dishes, doing laundry. Um, unfortunately, it's really hard to listen to audiobooks when I'm walking. I wish I could do that, but there's so much traffic in New York City. I just lose like 5 to 10 seconds of audio and I have no idea what just happened. It's so easy to get distracted for a little bit and lose track of the storyline. And that's really unfortunate. And it doesn't help on the subway too because the subway cars are so loud. Um, but I, I do still try because it takes me 30 minutes to commute and really can't read and walk at the same time. So I, I do have some frustrations with the system of audiobooks through my public library. I know Farah and I talked about this through Twitter last night. And we find it really annoying that the majority of audiobooks on the New New York Public Library, or probably most public libraries, is that the audiobooks are WMA format. And I know that's a Windows file type, but it's annoying because these file types are compatible to our iPods, but there's no way of getting them from our computers to the iPod because WMA is not Mac compatible. There's no middle ground for me to transfer from the internet to my computer to my iPod and it's just really frustrating because there's so many good audiobooks that I've you know that are books that I've been wanting to read for a while there's no way for me to access them the mp3 selection which is not compatible is really really limited one of the last dilemmas I'm having is how do you pick what to read and what to listen on audio it might seem like such an easy question, but I feel like there are some books that you just have to read them and you lose the value if you listen to them on audio. One example I could think of was, and it's a book I have been wanting to read for the longest time, is Invention of Hugo Cabaret by Brian Selznick. They actually have this one on MP3. 
and I was so excited, but then I realized I'll be losing a lot of the story because half the story is probably in pictures. So I don't think it's worth listening to an audio and I definitely have to pick it up. How do I pick YA books to read and what to listen? Do you guys have a certain method? Right now, the audiobooks I'm picking are either ones that I wanted to read but I don't have a copy of at home, and they're the ones that I'm still kind of shaky about. Like, I'm not sure if I wanted to read them in the first place, but there is an audiobook of it. I really can't be picky because of the limited selection, but at the same time, I'd still prefer to read something. And I don't want to lose any part of the story or like the value of that story if I'm listening to it instead of reading it. It's a totally different experience. I'm going to let you guys help me out. I know that Farah had a great recommendation for me. She told me to listen to Liva Bray's Beauty Queens. I have Seizures, the sequel to Virals on hold, and I have a few middle grade audiobooks also on my list. What are some great audiobooks that you guys have listened to? I would really love some recommendations. Help me out. Let me know what you guys think about audiobooks. Do you guys listen to audiobooks? Are you thinking about listening to audiobooks? What are some things you like about it and some things you don't like about it? I've really been wanting to talk to someone about audiobooks for the last few days ever since I started listening to them. So help me out, reply, leave another video response, I don't know, do whatever you want, and I'll see you guys in my next vlog. Bye!